In this video, we are going to have a look at how the anti-aliasing filter in the digital camera would affect the image quality. Kia ora, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here. Some of the digital camera in the market, uh, the manufacturer will tell you that they don't have the anti-aliasing filter in front of the sensor and that will give you better image sharpness. But you may wonder what exactly does it mean or how does it affect the image quality. So today we are going to do some comparison. I'm going to show you some comparison photo that I shot with two very similar camera but one camera with the anti-aliasing filter and one without so we can have a look and compare the image quality so that you can see the effect of the anti-aliasing filter yourself. The two cameras that I'm using for today's test are the Panasonic Lumix S1H and also the Panasonic Lumix S1. They are both full frame mirrors camera with a 24 megapixel image sensor. The biggest difference between the image sensor used by these two cameras is that the image sensor for the S1 does not have the anti-aliasing filter while the image sensor used in the S1H which is this camera here does have the anti-aliasing filter in front of the digital sensor. So I took a set of comparison photos using these two cameras with the same lens a Lumix 24-105 f4 lens at the aperture setting f8 and I put the camera on a tripod, I set it to a timer mode just to minimize any camera shake and also try to shoot at the setting that gives the best image quality. So now if you look at the images here, the one on the left were shot using the S1 which doesn't have the low pass anti-aliasing filter and the one on the right were shot with the S1H which does have the anti-aliasing filter. Now if you look at these two photos side by side at this kind of zoom level you cannot tell any difference at all and even if I showed it um, full screen, now this is with S1 and then I swap to the one with the S1H and to be honest I cannot tell the difference when I am switching between these two photos. Now if I put them side by side again and I start to zoom in the photo and I zoom into 100% zoom level and now if you look at this area I still cannot really see any difference between these two images um, the sharpness looks pretty much identical to me. If I zoom in a bit more, now at 200% zoom, and now I starting to see a little bit of difference. The image from the S1 does look slightly sharper than the image from the S1H. For example, if we look at this area here, look at the window and and the brick in the building in the foreground compared to this area here. I think you can probably also see that the photo from the S1 is a little bit sharper. Um, if you are watching this video on a smartphone, you probably cannot see the difference. Uh, you may have to watch this video on a bigger screen to see the difference. Now let me zoom in a little bit more and zoom in to 400% zoom level. So now um, we are looking at the very zoom in level and now you probably can see a bigger difference between the two image. The S1 image does look quite a bit sharper and it has a little bit more finer detail if you look at the same area here compared to the photo from the S1H. Um, for example if you look at this area here compared to the photo from the S1. You can see that the S1 does uh, capture a little bit more fine detail and it is a little bit sharper. Now let's look at the other set of photos. This comparison photo was shot using the camera's high resolution mode. So the camera would take multiple photos and then merge them together to create a 96 megapixel output image. Now let's zoom in a little bit. And now if we go to 100% zoom level and this time I see a tiny bit of difference between the two images. Um, the S1 is slightly sharper than the image 
um, from the S1 Edge. The difference is really very minor. If I don't have them put it like this side by side and look at it on a 4K screen, I probably cannot tell the difference. And now if I zoom in a bit more at 200%, I think it's now easier to see the difference between the two image. Look at the rail here. You can see that this is quite a bit sharper than the rail on the right hand side image, which does have the anti-aliasing filter. And if we zoom in a little bit more, go to 400%. Now you can probably see a bigger difference between the two images. The image from the S1 definitely uh, capture more detail, more sharpness compared to the one from the S1H. Now you may wonder then why the manufacturer want to put the low pass filter or the anti aliasing filter in front of the sensor if it does impact the image sharpness and I'm going to show you the reason why the manufacturer does that. So let's have a look at, um, let me switch this one. Okay, let's have a look at this photo that were captured using the S1H. So it does have the low pass anti-aliasing filter. If you look at the rail here and also the window frame and the door frame, you can see that um, they are all just the white or grayish color there, right? Now, if I show you the photo that were captured using the S1, and let me put it side by side with the photo from the S1H, and um, now, if I zoom in a little bit more, and you can see the image captured using the S1, it does have a lot of false color um, around the rail here. You see a lot of blue, yellow color around all this area, which in real life, it actually doesn't have any color. If you look at the one here, this is pretty much what it should look like in real life. So there's no color on the rail. The rail is just a grayish rail. While the one captured using the S1 does have a lot of those false color here. And that's why the manufacturer usually would put a low pass anti-aliasing filter in front of the sensor. That's to remove this false color caused by the moray pattern. So if you are just taking a photo, then you probably can still try to resolve this problem in post-processing, even though sometimes it could be quite difficult. But if you are capturing video, then it will be a lot harder to remove the moray pattern or this false color in the output footage. And that's why with the Panasonic S1H, which is more a video-centric camera, Panasonic decided to put the anti-aliasing filter in front because they want to minimize the moray pattern in the output video footage. So after looking at this comparison photo side by side, you can now see how the anti-aliasing filter would affect the image quality. Personally, I cannot really see too much a difference even when I'm looking at it side by side at 100% zoom level. If I zoom in a bit more at 200% zoom or 400% zoom, then definitely I can tell the difference. So if there are two cameras out there, they are all pretty much identical. The only difference is that one camera doesn't have the anti aliasing filter and one has. If you want to maximize the image sharpness and don't worry too much about the moray pattern, then definitely go for the camera that doesn't have the anti aliasing filter because that will give you the best image sharpness. But on the other hand, as you can see from the comparison photo, even when I zoom in and look at the photo side by side at 100% zoom level, I can't really tell the difference. I have to zoom into 200% or even 400% before I can actually see the difference between the two photos. So if there's a camera that you really like, but it does have an anti-aliasing filter in front, I would say if the anti-aliasing filter is the only thing that concerns you, then don't worry too much. Because while it does have a little bit impact on the image sharpness, it is really, really minor. If we have to look at two comparison photos that were captured using pretty much the best setting and also side by side at 200%, before we can see the difference. The difference between with and without anti-aliasing filter is really quite small. In real world, the difference would be even smaller. I would say choosing a non-optimal aperture setting would probably give you a much bigger impact in terms of the image sharpness. 
So after seeing all these comparison photos, what do you think about the anti-aliasing filter? Do you think it make a big difference to the output image quality? Would you want to buy a camera that doesn't have the anti-aliasing filter? Let me know in the comment field below. If you enjoy watching this video, please give this video a thumbs up and support my channel. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in my next video.